Position three. Ready? Move. We had a group of guys that went into an objective and they'd shot several bad guys. And one of the bad guys that they had shot, the last thing that he did was he pulled a pin on her hand grenade and was laying on that grenade. One of my buddies, when he rolled him over to search him, the grenade rolled out and it blew up, almost completely severing his leg. Loaded him up on a medevac bird that the rangers secured that HLZ, in comes a medevac bird, picks him up, they fly him back to the FOB. And at that base, we have a group of doctors called the JMAO, the Joint Medical Augmentation Unit. These guys are the best doctors in the military. They volunteer their services, and they're doing this out in the middle of a field with headlamps on, with their rifles slung across their back. And they're like, if we don't reroute the blood quickly through his leg, he's gonna lose his leg. I'm a Christian, and the good Lord was looking down at us that day, and one of those doctors ended up being a vascular surgeon. He was able to reroute his blood through his leg and save his leg. What I like about that story is it's about teamwork. It took the Rangers, it took the unit guys, it took 160th flying us in and out of that objective, and it took a group of doctors. You talk about dedication and sacrifice, that's what it's about. I'm Kyle Lamb. I'm uh, formerly a Special Forces Sergeant Major from the Special Mission Unit, and now I'm currently the president and founder of Viking Tactics and also the founder of the Stay in the Fight Foundation. So I'm sitting here with my buddy Marty, who grew up in South Dakota as well, and there's only a couple reasons to stay in South Dakota. One is to farm, and the other one's to be an alcoholic. So I decided I wasn't into farming, but I didn't want to be an alcoholic. And I'm, of course, I'm joking around there, but I wasn't much into farming. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna join the army. I'm gonna learn a trade. And my dad said, what are you gonna learn in the army? You're gonna learn to kill people, that's it. And I said, oh, I gotta try this for a few years. I joined the army and I, I never looked back. I loved the military. From the day I started jump school, I'll say that, until I retired, I loved the military. First thing out of the gate, we're gonna do a little bit of strong and support hand only stuff. We're gonna shoot and then you're gonna to have to holster and then shut the light off, so figure out how that's gonna be. Step forward with that hip. If you have to rotate your belt, do it. Reach back, and what I try to do is, I don't pull the gun out like this. Why is that? Because I don't have grip on it. I reach all the way down, grab, and pull the gun up. Put it between my knees, rotate, and then I'm up on target. So I was a little worried, like, can I really hang with these guys in, in a special mission unit? I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And when I rolled into that unit, I was amazed at the caliber of people I was working with. And that's what I liked about it. Everybody there was a superstar in one way or another, but nobody could be a superstar at everything because it's a challenging place to work. So being a climber, being a mobility guy, being a water guy, being a runner, being a, a lifter, being a guy that can shoot. So you kind of got to pick out what your specialty is going to be. And for me, it was shooting. I didn't really know what I was getting into initially, but once I got there and I realized what the mission is, you know, being the most elite counter-terrorist commandos in the world, training for hostage rescue, it was unbelievable. I mean, we were able to focus in that, that niche and, and be the best we could possibly be. Having a language wasn't a priority. Being able to shoot, move, and communicate, conduct close quarter battle, that was the priority, and I really, really enjoyed that. Three rounds to the center of the target. Ready, go! Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the first run with it lit up just like it is right now. Turn your light on when you're doing this. Go through that process. If you uh, are shooting with a the handheld, then put that light somewhere that you can use it. First time we'll get to see the targets. Second time that we, when you're ready to go, we'll, uh, we'll shut the lights all the way off for that one, okay? So in Somalia, I would say some of the things that were overlooked or maybe misconstrued in some of the movies and some of the books was the relationship between the unit guys and the rangers. 
I looked at those guys as younger dudes that I wanted to help mentor. We needed their help. We couldn't be successful on the battlefield without them. And then also the relationship with the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment guys. Older dudes that are the best in the business at what they do. Once again, without that teamwork, we couldn't be successful on the battlefield. And I think that's, that's something that is probably not well known is if it weren't for those guys, I wouldn't be here today. But let's just think about what we're really doing here. I come up and I shoot a target, now I gotta move over there. Do we wanna have that hammer back or do we wanna decock as we're running? Decock. We wanna decock. I decided to retire when I put, in my notebook, I put reasons to stay and reasons to go. And I had more reasons to stay. And then one day somebody said, hey, when you get out, you'll have to come back and do shooting instruction for us. And I said, that's a reason to go because I can still come back and train guys here. So, both hands on the gun. Strong hand only, support hand only. And then my Sergeant Major brought me in and he said, you better not get out of the Army. You're gonna take a squadron. And he kind of chewed me out. And then he shut the door and he said, hey man, that was the Sergeant Major talk. Now I'm gonna give you the friend talk. He goes, dude, you need to get out of the Army. You got a lot to offer people by training them. And you're not gonna do that if you move into the next leadership position. So he's like, hey man, you feel like you should get out, get out. And I feel like I made the right call. I've loved every minute of my time in the military, but I've also really enjoyed being out and getting to travel the country and the world and train people. All right, first three shooters on the line. Like, please, sir. Yes, sir. I'm crabbing a little bit, but both feet are going this direction. So I'm here, I'm here, or I'm here. Okay. We're here at Sig Sauer Academy. We're in the indoor range. We're doing a night fighter course. So we're taking law enforcement, military, and civilian personnel. We're teaching them how to fight in and around vehicles with a pistol, and not just in and around vehicles, but use a light, handheld light, a pistol mounted light. And this is one of my favorite classes because this is where everything comes together. Where's that first round gonna go? Go now. More than likely high, but we probably don't really know. I want you to watch so when they make that shot, just watch where that first round goes. Aim really good with your first round so that you know where you're aiming so that we see how high it deviates from there. So aim, at the, at the, aim at that center box and then we'll see how high or how low that round goes. Did you hear that? They've taken pistol 1.5, then Street Fighter, and now Night Fighter and they're starting to understand how everything ties together. And I love that because it's, it's the ultimate place for us to test without actually shooting at real bad people. We can get them in these vehicles, put them under some stress, turn the lights out, and it's awesome. The thing I miss most about the military is everybody having the same mission. When you're out here with a bunch of civilians, even former military guys, the mission is, is different. This guy might have a mission to make money, this guy might have a mission to take care of veterans, this guy might have a mission to sell coffee to a bunch of people. Who would think of a guy that would do that? But uh, you know, you look at, at folks that, that have a mission in a unit, whether it's the Rangers, Special Forces, they all have the same mission focus. So everybody is driven to be successful at that mission. And I feel like that's one of the things that I miss is when I look at people on my left and my right, we're not focused on the same mission. That's why I try to get around people where we do have similar focus because it makes us more successful on the battlefield, which now is the home front. 